going on guys? Beastly Gamer here. Welcome to my channel. Oh god, I've been wanting to get with you guys for so long and talk about this. Digital Foundry has revealed the Xbox Scorpio True Specs. And uh, to no one's surprise, it's pretty damn powerful. Uh, I was actually salivating at the mouth thinking about what this thing is capable of doing. What they've done with Forza Horizon 3, they've actually been able to render it in 4K, 60 frames per second, and it only uses like 68% of the computational power of the Xbox Scorpio, so this thing is pretty damn powerful. But I found a pretty interesting article I want to share with you guys about this whole deal and how the Scorpio is going to stack up against the PlayStation 4 Pro, which I already own. I have two 4K TVs, so I'm ready to utilize the power. But is power all you need? I'll drop a link in the description. How does Xbox Scorpio compare to PlayStation 4 Pro? As expected, the Scorpio wins on horsepower. How will the Xbox Scorpio, the upcoming reboot to the Xbox One, first announced at E3 last year, compare with last year's PlayStation 4 Pro? That's the big question, and judging by how its size is up, it's something you can expect Microsoft to trumpet loudly, which I'm sure they will be, especially going towards E3. But to start, it's enlisted an independent expert to testify. Quote, Fundamentally, Scorpio is more powerful, so it should be able to do everything that the PlayStation 4 Pro can do, said Digital Foundry's Richard Ledbetter, who uh, actually did the reveal. He's great. I love Digital Foundry. Uh, Richard went on to say, quote, Well, to be clear, it's going to be more expensive because it's putting in more technology into the box. So, yeah, obviously in terms of the core computational power of the machine, it's going to be better, end quote. To be clear, Ledbetter doesn't know the Scorpio console will actually cost more at retail, just that the cost of Microsoft to build the Xbox Scorpio will succeed the cost to build a PlayStation 4 Pro box. Quote, we know it's important to deliver an experience that demonstrates the power gap between the PS4 Pro and Scorpio at a price that makes sense to console gamers, end quote, said Xbox's Albert Pinello. And that was what Albert said last year. While the spec confirmation is welcome, it's long been expected to best the PS4 Pro in sheer horsepower. Pinello told gamers last September following the PS4 Pro reveal that, quote, performance delta will be obvious, end quote. And uh, here are some of the specs, the differences we can expect from the PlayStation Pro and from the Xbox Scorpio. When it comes to the CPU, the Xbox Scorpio has eight custom x84 cores locked at 2.3 gigahertz. The PS4 Pro has eight Jaguar cores locked at 2.1 gigahertz. Uh, for the GPU, the graphics processing unit, the Scorpio has 40 customized compute units at 1,172 megahertz. And the PS4 Pro has 36 improved GCN compute units at 911 megahertz. So that's uh, more, again, on the Xbox Scorpio. Memory, the Xbox Scorpio has 12 gigabytes of GDDR5. The PS4 Pro has 8 gigabytes of GDDR5. Memory bandwidth, the Scorpio has 326 gigabytes per second. And the PS4 Pro has 218 gigabytes per second. Uh, hard drives are exactly the same, one terabyte for both. In the optical drive, the Xbox Scorpio will retain the 4K UH Blu-ray. And, uh, of course, the PS4 Pro has regular Blu-ray. But hardware is only part of the story. Without great games to take advantage of that hardware, Xbox Scorpio remains stuck where the Xbox One is, competing against a console that has a much larger install base and a wealth of exclusive titles. It's a big deal. Ledbetter went on to say, quote, Having the hardware advantage is always great, and it does tend to translate into improved multi-platform game experiences, but it's not going to change the situation that there's a ton of great exclusives on PS4 Pro that just look incredible, end quote. And it's very true. Without Xbox exclusives to drive adoption, E3 is the obvious place for Microsoft to share its plans. It's up to those third-party multi-platform games to target the enhanced capabilities of Scorpio, but Microsoft is also hoping that a performance improvement for all Xbox One games will encourage would-be adopters to trade up. Eurogamer stated, quote, Here, it's down to the platform holder to take ownership of compatibility issues, but the advantage is this. Unlike PS4 Pro's boost mode, Scorpio theoretically allows for the full power of the new console to be deployed on older games, end quote. Coupled with supporting and also improving your existing compatible Xbox 360 titles, Microsoft is hoping to use compatibility with your Xbox library as a key point of comparison with the PS4 Pro. So, I, I saw the specs. I think it looks like it's going to be a very powerful system. I think that the, the Xbox Scorpio will be the most powerful system at the end of the year. Uh, from what I've heard from Digital Foundry and other news outlets, this thing is approaching the power of a modern, up-to-date gaming PC. We're, we're there. We're almost there at that point. Of course, 
in two or three months, it'll take off again, and of course you'll never be able to keep up with the PC, but it's tantamount to uh, a gaming PC, a gaming rig. So this is very powerful. I mean, we're talking 4K native games. They're talking about up 900p games to 4K, 60 frames, and it wasn't even, you know, using the full horsepower of the system, so that's a, a big deal. I think VR on this thing is going to be a big deal, but I do agree with this article that they're going to have real issues unless they come out at E3 and show us games. Not indies, but big budget Microsoft exclusives that are going to be only on the Xbox One, Xbox Scorpio, that are that look fun, that people want to play, that people are waiting for, stuff that's not getting canceled, like, you know, Scalebound. You know, we got some really great games coming to the PS4 that a lot of people are super excited about. You know, Death Stranding, Kojima's new project, is going to be awesome. I have no idea what it's about, but it's something I can't wait to play. The Last of Us 2 is huge news for anybody who's ever played a video game. That's something that's on the radar that everybody has to play. You know, uh, Days Gone, which of course looks amazing. I don't know exactly how great the game is going to be, but it's it, the showing that they showed us last year looks incredible. It's something that most people want to play on PlayStation. The new God of War game looks like it's going to be incredible. And so Microsoft needs to come out at E3 this year. They need to have games like this. They need to have competition. They need to put real exclusive competition on the table. And they also need to work in tandem with the third-party developers to get exclusive added bonuses and perks, graphical flourishes that only work on the Xbox codename Scorpio. Stuff that you won't see on the PS4 Pro, stuff that you won't see on the PS4 or the Xbox One. They need to make the Scorpio the best place to play these games. Right now, I think the power sounds amazing. I love horsepower. I think that, you know, having a rig that can play amazing games and make, you know, your third-party exclusives amazing is a great thing. But will it help Microsoft win the war? Not unless Microsoft comes out with games. You guys let me know what you think in the comment section below. Is power everything? Or do you think that Microsoft is in desperate need of some real meaningful exclusives? Right now, there's like two or three that I can think of off the top of my hand. And the last time I counted, PlayStation had nine upcoming exclusives. So it's kind of a big difference. You guys let me know what you think in the comments. Be sure to give a thumbs up. Show support for my channel. Join the Facebook group. Follow me on Twitter. And you can share your videos and support my channel at BeastlyGamer.com. I'm the Beastly Gamer. And I'll see you guys next time. Take off.